Hey Brownie Bunch, this is Barlow, and I'm going to be venturing into the Blue Ridge Mountains to visit one of our founding fathers' home. Right now, I need to get my coat because it is cold, very cold. So, here we go. And I'm here, there's Stitch. I am about to go into the building, and I signed myself up for a very long tour of Monticello, where I actually get to go upstairs which no one is allowed upstairs unless you're a part of this tour. So I am very excited and I can't wait to show you guys. up on the mountain now uh, this is Monticello behind me um, but I'll get into that in a minute I just need to share with you this beautiful beautiful view from the house beginning of our tour, the tour guide said that Thomas Jefferson was intelligent and forward-thinking in terms of science and math. Take his weather vane, for example. Instead of having to walk out of his house into the rain, snow, or heat to see which way the wind was blowing, he attached the weather vane to this plate under the roof of his porch so that all he had to do was look out his window. Jefferson had many visitors as a famous politician, so having a great room to welcome guests was important. This would be where he displayed collections of items that he was most proud of, most of these coming from the explorers he sent out west. Maybe you've heard of Lewis and Clark? The coolest thing I learned about this room is this clock. This clock has been running for over 200 years and acts as a weekly calendar as well. As the clock ticks away, there is a wire that is attached to metal spheres. Over the course of 24 hours, they slowly drop moving closer to the day marker. After the week is over, one of Jefferson's enslaved people would reset the clock and it would start again. What is the last day you see on his calendar? Thomas Jefferson was quoted saying, I cannot live without books. This was clearly true since he had between 9,000 and 10,000 books in his lifetime and made sure to have a library in his house. A collection of more than 6,000 of his books was sold to Congress in 1815. That is a lot of reading. This room, located on the second floor, was included in the original Monticello plans to be used as a nursery. This plan became reality when Martha Jefferson Randolph, Jefferson's daughter, and her family moved to Monticello. The youngest children lived in the nursery until they graduated to various living spaces throughout the house. Enslaved nursemaids frequently spent their time watching over these young children. Throughout the rest of the second floor, you will find a lot of the bedrooms, including the granddaughter's room, used particularly by Cornelia, Virginia, and Ellen Randolph. This room is located directly over the library. Ellen later wrote of hearing her grandfather at work humming old tunes, generally Scotch songs, but sometimes Italian airs or hymns. On the third floor, there are three rooms. This room was likely for Jefferson's grandsons as there are two beds that alcove into the wall. Jefferson taught his grandsons how to survey land and valued education. He felt education was important in order to protect the legacy of the revolutionary generation. Now for my favorite part. Thomas Jefferson didn't have a dome originally in his Monticello plans. It wasn't until he got back from seeing the architecture in France that he decided to use that influence to recreate the domes he had seen in France in his own home. Back then, having space in your home was a sign of wealth and status, so this massive room remained empty. Do you and your friends have a secret hideout, a clubhouse, or somewhere you go to spend time with your siblings? Well, TJ's grandkids did. 
Behind this door is what Virginia Randolph names the cuddy. This hideaway was either extremely hot or frigidly cold and infested with bees and wasps, but Virginia wrote that they wouldn't give it up until a rat found their, quote, fairy palace. Remember the weekly calendar in the first room? Well, the last day pictured was Thursday, but in that room you could see up until Friday, which was labeled on the floor. Jefferson didn't forget a day, though. Instead of repositioning things so that the whole week was together, he drilled a hole in the floor. If you ventured down to the basement, you would find Saturday. Okay, that was probably one of the most amazing tours that I've ever been on. I was so excited. I even made a friend. Monticello um, means little mountain. But what I didn't know is that there is a mountain over there that is called Montalar something. I'm going to put it in text right here. Um, but it actually means big mountain. Jefferson acquired Mauna Alto in 1777. Just look at that house. At this point in our history, slavery had not been abolished. Thomas Jefferson owned over 600 enslaved people in his lifetime. Since they were seen as his property, they also lived on the mountain. This is an example of an enslaved person's shelter at Monticello. Mulberry Row is the name of the street running beside Jefferson's home that was lined with houses just like these. Some buildings were used to weave fabric or make nails, which would have been the jobs of the enslaved people. Okay, so I'm going to hop on a bus and go down to Jefferson's burial site, and I will show you his tombstone, which I have a couple of fun facts about that. I will see you there. So I actually wasn't able to go to the gravesite because it was closed because of the snow. But I will leave you with this fun fact. Thomas Jefferson hated being president so much that he refused to have it listed on his tombstone. Instead, he wanted to be remembered for what he was most proud of, which was writing the Declaration of Independence, the Virginia Statute for Religious Freedom, and founding the University of Virginia. I hope you guys loved Monticello as much as I did. There is so much more here for you to see and learn about than I could put in this video. It would be like two hours long. Um, and I wasn't able to do everything because I've been here all day. Uh, but one thing that I was able to do was hit up the gift shop. So I will have some stuff to show you. Um, I am going to drive home and get warm because it's freezing. And I will see you next time. Oh. And treat people with kindness.